Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today it's reading glasses. I am aging and it is an honor and a privilege to be able to age. That said, it's not always the most colorful, wonderful thing when you go to buy something like reading glasses that I'm starting to need to go with those handy dandy bifocals. Well, these are plain and boring and I wanted something colorful and I wanted something fun because just because I need reading glasses does not mean I should look, uh, you know, unhappy or uncolorful. So instead of these Yiko colors, I am going to turn these into colorful, playful reading glasses, the kind that I will be excited to wear instead of not really looking forward to it. So here are the eyeglasses, the reading glasses that I got off Amazon. I think they were three bucks, I mean, super cheap. So if I ruin these, I don't care. I'm willing to take that chance. And then here are the vintage patinas that I'm gonna use to put some color on it. Now these vintage patinas work extremely well on things like metal, cause that's what it's designed for. I think it's gonna work just fine on plastic. It's gonna stick to it very, very well. And that's what I need. Now I'm also working on an art journal page here. That way if I smear any paints or that kind of stuff, I don't waste any of it. I get it caught and it'll be the start of an art journal page. You're also seeing me put on some gloves and that's because the vintage patinas are very difficult to wash off your hands. So I am gonna have gloves on both hands as I'm doing this that way. Well, I don't permanently turn my, well, it's not permanent, but you know what I mean. I'm not gonna end up getting this stuff all over my fingers. It'll be an easy, easy cleanup this way. So what I'm gonna do is pick a color to start with and then I'm gonna give it a shake. I wanna make sure it's totally mixed up. There's a ball that you can hear bouncing around in there. And then I'm gonna put some on here and see what it does. As I kinda of smear it around with my finger, it, it kinda of looks well, kinda of washed out, smeary. So, and I want a more solid look, but I figure this is gonna be layer one. So we'll see what happens. And that was my fine and technical way of cleaning off my glove is just by wiping it right onto that art journal page. I'm gonna put some more on here and this time I'm dabbing up and down. I'm basically playing around to see if I can find a way to apply this that I like the most. Haven't found one that's really my all time favorite yet, but I'm kind of get a feeling of it. Well, now I'm gonna head over to the tricky part, the rim. And what I'm doing is just carefully staying off of the lens. I'm putting a little bit of the patina right there and then just dabbing it around with my finger to spread it around a little bit. If I get any on the lenses, that's what the alcohol and the Q-tips are for over there. That's rubbing alcohol and that will take this stuff off. So if I get any of it on the lenses, I figure that'll be my cleanup. So I'm gonna keep going along and dabbing bits of color in places on these. Now I'm just gonna start sticking a whole bunch of colors all over in different places. And as I'm doing this, I'm gonna treat this as the first layer. It doesn't have to be perfect. I don't care if there are any kind of flaws. I just don't wanna get any of the patina onto the lenses if I can avoid it. But if it does get there, I'm just gonna call it an oops and I'm gonna use a Q-tip and wipe it up. I'm also gonna take all the lids off of the bottles right now. That way I can just grab and go. I am gonna shake these up every now and then when I use them just to make sure that the color is mixed well. Coming back down to these edges, I'm gonna put a lot of that yellow on there because I wanna cover up the black of that arm on it and other little bits of color. So that side's gonna take a little bit more of the patina just to cover it all up because it's a larger area. As I'm doing this too, I'm trying my best not to touch things any more than I have to because every time I touch it with the grubby glove, what happens is I end up either picking up something that's not completely dry or leaving something behind. Now in some of these bottles, the paint just flows, right? Comes gushing right out of them. And in other ones, not so much. Well, the ones where it doesn't come out so much, that's cause it's clogged. And what I'm gonna do is just take a pin or a sewing needle or something like that and actually just did it there and it didn't work. So I'm gonna come in a second time to that same bottle and I'm really gonna work that pin around to break open whatever is clogging it in there, test that it works and then I'm back in business. This will happen on a couple of them and it's really not that big a deal to me. It's part of the, the deal when you have something that has a paint that comes out of a tip like this. It does clog up. It's, I don't think it's any fault of the product. I think it's just a nature of having paint and things come out of a skinny tip. But the good news is it's easy to fix too. So I've got just about the first layer on here, got it mostly covered up and that's not exciting enough for me. I'm now gonna come in and put more in different places. I'm actually also very proud of myself that I haven't gotten any on the lenses yet. I was positive I'd have a giant fingerprint by now right in the middle of the lens. 
Well, now I'm going to give these the artist version of the racing stripe. I'm going to put a big glob of white there, and then I'm going to tap it down, basically forcing that drip to run down the arm of the eyeglasses. So my idea of racing stripes, artist style. And if your drip doesn't run all the way down, you just add a little more to it like I just did there. The tricky part about this is, is now I gotta hold them like this until it's dry and it won't run. So I'm just gonna hold the glasses like this as I come in and start adding some more layers to the top. I'm gonna put little dots of things here and there. I'm gonna make scratches and marks, that kind of stuff with the tips, just to get some variation because I want it to just be this absolute rainbow color exposure, exposure explosion all around the frames. And I have to say, it's rather freeing to know, should anything go awry? Should I put too much somewhere? Should I really not like something? Should it spill onto something? Good old rubbing alcohol would take it right off. I'm just adding more colors here and there. And the problem is, is I'm stuck holding it this way until the sides dry. And now I've created a problem where, yeah, now I've got to stay here until the front dries. And I'm kind of feeling a bit trapped here because I want to work on other parts of it too. So I'm kind of coming to the dreaded decision that I might have to actually break out the heat gun. Now I don't get a heat gun out lightly simply because I'm incredibly impatient. But I also want to think about this and using a heat gun, I don't know how it's going to react to these. So I want to be careful seeing as how these are cheap plastic glasses I don't want to overheat them. And I've got one surefire way to make sure that I don't do that, and that's I'm still holding these things. So as I hit it with the heat gun, if my hands feel just a little too hot, then I need to move that heat gun because if my hands can't tolerate it, I'm probably not gonna be that great for the eyeglasses. But once I've got them dried off, then I'm ready. I can move them around and add some more color because I need to get more on those arms. That's the one that doesn't have quite as much coverage as the very front of the lenses. And that's in part because it's a bigger area to cover. So I just need to keep working on that, adding bits here and there and there and here. Now the very last part that I need to deal with is where my fingers were holding the glasses most of the time, and that's right on the nose. Because every time I was touching the bridge on the glasses, I was either leaving a little bit of stuff from my finger, or I was smearing what was already there because it, was never, it wasn't fully dry. So I'm gonna have to rest these down here, put the colors around the top, and now I can really get some more color playing around from this, this bird's eye view on these. Well, I'm going to take my gloves off now, and I'm just going to be careful as I'm picking up the glasses to make sure that I'm picking them up where it's pretty dry or almost dry. That way I can kind of take a look at them and deal with the bridge. Because I know my nose, I have a very sensitive nose, and so I don't want stuff on there. Any kind of texture there will bug me just so intensely. So what I'm going to do is just take some of that Q-tip dipped in the rubbing alcohol and clean off any of the paint that's right on the inside of the bridge of the glasses. That way it will be smooth and wonderful and ready for me to wear. So I've given the glasses a couple minutes to dry and what do they look like now? Well, hear what the new glasses look like. Before they had just been one sort of boring color, really kind of plain, but again, for three bucks, what do you expect? And now they're more my style. They've got more color, they've got more play, and I'm actually kind of excited to wear some of these reading glasses now instead of before where it was kind of like, uh. Now with these, you're probably wondering, are these going to chip? How long will this last? And I gotta tell you, I don't know. I figure if I treat them with a moderate amount of respect, they should hold it pretty well for me. Am I gonna seal them with anything? I probably could, but I'm not gonna bother with that. This stuff really sticks on well. It sticks very well to metal, really adheres to plastic in my opinion, and if you take alcohol to it, you can get it off, but I'm not gonna rub alcohol on it, so I think these things are gonna be just fine the way they are for what I'm doing. And again, $3 glasses. Well, thanks for joining me for today's play. Enjoyed this video? Give it a thumbs up. And if you think you know somebody that would enjoy it, I'd really appreciate it if you shared it with them. Now, what if you want more play than this? What if you want a downloadable video and PDF for you to start playing with? What if you'd like things like Sparks of Artspiration, which are free downloads sent to you? Then every two weeks in a newsletter. What if you'd like to take a free workshop called Permission to Play? Well, all of that stuff is over on the blog at acolorfuljourney.com. So head on over there if you'd like more play. Thanks for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.